Hey folks, so I got to recently sit down and chat with Nate from WASD20 about our experiences, both of us coming to tabletop RPGs as adults, how that's uh, been good, the kind of downfalls of coming to it as an adult, as well as how it's changed our lives. So let's jump right into that conversation. My name is Nate and um... I run the YouTube channel WASD20, and I also, uh, the past couple years, have gotten into some artwork in the form of fantasy cartography, and my moniker there is Sellsword Maps. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a high school teacher by day, and by night, an RPG crazy head. <laughs> like us all. Yeah. Cool. So um, we got into playing uh, tabletop role-playing games about the same time. And I thought it'd be interesting to kind of chat about getting into it as adults versus most of my friends that I play with got into gaming as kids when they were teenagers or even younger. Yeah. How did you first get into playing tabletop RPGs? Yeah, so I think I was, let's see, I was probably about 33. Uh, and this was now I'm 30, I'm almost 37. So, <laughs> um, yeah, just a few years ago, uh, I, <clears throat> I think I had just been kind of around so many things that made that, that made me think of tabletop RPGs, you know, from, you know, playing computer and, uh, console RPGs at a very young age. Um, and reading D and D novels, actually quite a few mm -hmm. of those. Uh, and just like going to the used bookstore and finding these like books that just, they were fascinating. And me and my friend got really into them. We play hero quest, you know, all these things that kind of like, it, it just got us thinking along those lines. And it's just, a, it's a wonder that I didn't find it earlier, but eventually I think I would, I read two books that were influential. One was masters of doom, which is about the guys from id software who created Wolfenstein and doom and commander keen and all this stuff. And reading about, um, it's just like the history of the company and it's fascinating and the drama and all this and the business dealings. And um, they had an ongoing D&D &D game and it just like, it was, uh, it was crazy sounding. It was just like, what is this thing, right? And then like a year later, I read Ready Player One. And um, that was like, you know, and, and I, I just, everything about that book, there were so many things that I was into in that book and everything that I wasn't into, I was like, anything this book mentions, I want to explore more. Mm -hmm. because I, I love so many things that it mentions, but there's a few things that I, Rush, I never really liked Rush when I was growing up, you know, but it's like maybe Rush is worth a listen and like D&D. &D. Okay, I should try D&D, &D, you know. So anyway, that's kind of what finally got me into it. And then I just reached out and um, on a couple of Facebook groups and said, hey, does anyone play? Because I didn't know anyone who played. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got I got into it. My um, my husband had played when he was younger, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a couple of friends that were getting together and started gaming. And he invited me to join in on one of their sessions. And it was a like I could sit in, listen for the first hour until they kind of got to where my character could join in. And then it was a it could be a one shot that I only was there for, or I could join the campaign and even before it got to my character is like, I love this. Why have I not um, gotten into this? Which was odd because my brother played D and D. Um, I found out my parents had played D and D. A lot of my friends played um, various tabletop RPGs, but I was always kind of side friend groups that I wasn't quite a part of. Um, so you kind of talked a little bit that a lot of the like, similar things, uh, computer games, stuff like that. Uh, did you have anybody else uh, around you playing tabletop RPGs when you were younger or? No, I really didn't. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, I, I grew up in a pretty conservative circle, you know, I went to a small Christian school. And I think I honestly thought that if it I, I don't know if I thought it was satanic or anything, but I was, I was skeptical of it. I was one of the, <laughs> because you know, you don't know anything about it and you hear these things in your little bubble and like, you know, I think, you know, I, I didn't think it was that bad because I, I read the novels, but I mm -hmm. felt like I had heard things about it from like, you know, my, my friend's mom and stuff that I was like, I shouldn't like, you know, bring these novels over there, or, you know, <laughs> like, um, so yeah, I think that that was 
probably a part of it. It was just like, no, we don't do that. Um, but I, I think I knew deep down that like, oh yeah, this is something that awesome. But no, I never, um, I didn't know anybody. I can't name a single person up to probably the age of, I don't know, 30 that hmm. I even heard who said, oh yeah, I play D and D. Um, I found out later that some college friends had played in college, but I didn't even know they played. It was just like a thing they did once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, I, it's really yeah. interesting that like, your parents, like you never knew they played, like, but they had played a little bit. And it's like, isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, I found a lot of folks, I think especially recently as it's become a little bit cooler, <clears throat> a little bit more mainstream, I guess. Um, yeah. I've had a lot of folks that, like just chatting with they're like oh yeah I, I i played a while ago or i play that i i never would have expected them to have played yeah. um and just kind of once that once you kind of open the door you start finding out like oh there are all these other connections out there yeah yeah and it is still something that <clears throat> you know it's not it's not like a stigma attached to it and it's much it's become much more mainstream which um which I think is overall awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. But there, you know, there are some downsides to having your little niche thing. That's kind of like, you know, overall it's awesome though. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, it still is something that um, I, I think it's, it, some people still don't mention it. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, I'm very open about it, obviously. <laughs> um, but it is kind of a weird thing. Like I was just talking to a neighbor lady the other day who's like, an, she's an elementary school teacher in the same district and I'm a high school teacher and we have kids the same age and they play together and, you know, we're neighbors. Um, so, uh, you know, and just talking to her, oh yeah, you know, I was uh, just, we had our RPG club, first RPG club at school today. And she's like, oh, help me out here. And I'm like, oh, D&D. &D? And she's like, yeah, still. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. I, I assume too much sometimes. Dungeons and Dragons. And it was just like one of those things that I was like, I, I don't know how she's going to react to this. Is she going to think I'm some weirdo? Like, I still think that. I still, I need to let go of that. But yeah. How is that for you? Is, was that something that you had to like, you ever had with people when you were getting into it? Like, well, I'm getting really into this thing. Yeah, it definitely, like, even still, like, sometimes folks at work, um, like, I went to Gen Con, and people were like, oh, where are you going? And I'm like, I'm going to Indianapolis. And, like, it took, like, the for, for me going a couple of years and being a little bit more comfortable, and I think also getting to know some of the people I work with and being like, I'm going to a gaming convention. I'm going to go play role-playing games for the weekend. Okay, bye. Yeah. Um, but still, and yeah. I'm going to use my vacation time for this. It's like... Yeah. Some people are like, oh, no way. <laughs> yeah, I still sometimes get like nervous because I, I do think there still is a bit of judgment and a bit of a stigma there. Um, d depending, also dep like definitely in certain crowds and like as I get to know folks, I feel more open about being like, yeah, I play tabletop RPGs and I make videos about it. Um, but when I first get to meet people it's usually not something that I bring up right at first until they mention a few things and I'm like okay maybe you're not going to just be like oh you're a weirdo <laughs> yeah it's it's not for me it's not something that I'm usually worried I mean, even though I still I teach at a Christian school I still there's still some stigma and I've actually had conversations with people who are like wait a sec you know and I'm just like oh boy, here it comes right and I will defend it and I will Mm -hmm. I will preach the gospel of D and D, but, um, you know, I think that, um, I, I'm more, it's more of a thing that's like, it's not like childish. Isn't that like what, mm. you know, I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel like that is at least my fear is that they're going to think it's childish. That like oh, okay. this grown man who's like a homeowner and a father of three and, you know, supposed to be a responsible adult is that's his main hobby. Um, but Hey, there it is. And I, I think, mm -hmm. uh, I'm getting, I'm getting better at being bold about it. And like that thing with my neighbor even was just like, oh, Hey, I'm just going to say it. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so kind of the, the childish reminded me. So, um, I did want to touch on kind of what you think, uh, some of the maybe advantages and disadvantages of getting into the hobby kind of later in life is. Yeah, I mean, 
it's it's hard for me to immediately think of any advantages, right? It's kind of like <laughs> I don't know about you, but you're like, I'm like, I wish that 14 year old me had had this thing. Um, I, I wish because yeah, there were times when you know I, I didn't have that many friends, or, or the friends I did have just weren't. I was not the cool crowd in sixth or seventh grade, and we didn't really have that much to do, <laughs> you know, like we. I remember when <laughs> when we got Warcraft two, me and my my best bud Will were really into this game, and um, and there was a trailer for the Diablo uh, for Diablo on the disc for Warcraft two, the first Diablo game, and I remember making characters for Diablo, <laughs> like before we all we had seen is the trailer, right, and maybe read a piece mm-hmm. of the article, and we're making characters and we're specking them out, and like okay, I'll yeah, I'll be an archer, and you know you can have a battle axe, and like you know, and like it was just like. It was right there, like, you know, like, um, yeah. So, so it's more lament usually, but no, I think they're, I don't know. I, I wonder what you think about advantages. Like, um, is there maybe some baggage that I don't have from from playing it in in a way that maybe is not all that healthy? Like, just murder yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, one thing I've run into, um, it's it's been brought to my attention, is that. Um, because I've gotten into gaming as an adult, there are some kind of preconceived notions about like, especially, um, how to use specific spells and how to interact with certain things that I don't have because I haven't been playing the game. I haven't been introduced that, oh, this spell is used for this way. Um, so there have been a couple times that I've, I've been like, oh, I'll use this spell to do this. And we pause to double check that the rules don't specifically say that it can't be used that way. And it's turned out to be fun. Um, at the same time, like we were running a game and somebody was asking me um, questions about the the setting and I was like I don't I don't know what D&D setting this is in it's a module that I ran and it turned out there were a couple of references to characters that clued what uh world it was in but I had no idea (laughs) yeah um so yeah yeah. I think I mean I think that's that's great and I I think you get at kind of yeah the -the out-of-the-box thinking you know that like uh, and I, I can see that even with um, with meta gaming, mm. um, how how nice it is to be free from that because you don't know that fire damage is trolls and skeletons are immune to bludgeoning damage or, or uh, resistance or you know these things that like D and D players know and there is kind of this freshness to to not having that baggage that like well I know this but I have to figure out a way for my character not to know it yeah now I know it but at the same time like I haven't been in the habit of metagaming ever and um and that's I mean to some extent probably when I was new like it was natural that we we tread down that path a little bit but anyway that's nice and I think you know too with yeah with the classes and and just um the this the stereotypes of of you know here's what dwarves are and here's what elves are and maybe we're a little bit more free to to be playful with with that and and veer outside you know color outside the lines a little bit i think that i have been that way um yeah mm-hmm. i remember like like my my one of my first characters was an elf and like in the the tavern was drinking ale and one of the other players is like you're an elf shouldn't you be drinking wine i was just like no <laughs> you know like <laughs> i like ale <laughs> right and it was just like hey that was, that was my out of the box character i didn't i don't know elves drink wine oh okay i guess i should have paid better attention in lord of the rings maybe but (laughs) and you never know especially if you're playing in a homebrew maybe elves do drink right they're the master brewers of this world thank you very much (laughs) um yeah i also sometimes i enjoy hearing about some of my friends who've been playing since they're younger how horrible some of their early characters were and i'm like oh i kind of am glad that I never had that experience, but I'm kind of sad that I missed out on having just something to look back on and be like, oh, tiny me, why did you think this was a good idea? Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, I definitely get, and I, you know, I, I supervise, um, sort of, I, I am not as involved as I would like to be our RPG club at school. And yeah, you know, I've observed some, some things in there that at first I'm very much like, whoa, like, why are you doing this? Like, oh, do you think this is going to work? Like, and just like, just lots of face palm moments. And then realizing like, oh, they're high schoolers. Like, mm -hmm. They have to they have to go through some of these things, and you know, and I can gently maybe suggest things, and and um, but I, I I can't be overly judgmental with it, and at the same time, yeah, I see it, and I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of glad I never had to go through that. And there's there might be certain things that could even taint the experience for some people. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I hate to say it, and I try to. This year, we tried to like lay down some kind of principles of the club, and like you know, not, not rules necessarily, but like some general things to strive for, you know, like value friendship over oh, getting the rules right, or you just, just things like that, that I'm hopeful will help. And at the same time, like I can see the natural tendencies of just young, young kids who are playing RPGs to, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you're younger, sometimes there's like social contracts of the table go out the window in, in favor of like rules or, or game or stuff like that, that can actually make it a worse experience for the players when you forget those things. Yeah. Or just having a character at the table who, you know, hogs the spotlight or who is just the, the one who everyone's like, Oh, this character is such a pain in the butt. <laughs> like, why did you make this kind of character? <laughs> and like, you know, like they got to work through that. And, and yeah, it can probably taint the experience somewhat for, for people. Mm-hmm. And so coming to it at the age of 34, I had less of that, probably still somewhat. I've, I've probably been the pain in the butt character at times, just because I kind of felt out like, what is this whole thing? But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I also have enjoyed, like, I don't get as jaded, I guess, as some of my friends when it comes to like some of the odder or like more classic monsters that come up in RPGs. Like, mm -hmm getting to fight a mimic. I'm like, this is really cool. This is awesome. And other people are like, oh my gosh, it's another mimic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm the same way. And like, um, yeah, uh, orcs and goblins. I love orcs and goblins. Like they just, yeah, anyway, I have not, I have not fought, uh, you know, 1,340 goblins in my D&D &D career. So maybe that's part of it. <laughs> Do you have um, like one kind of, I guess, more of a classic monster that you really like? Um, hmm. I would probably say orcs, um, skeletons. I, mm. I love just the idea of these, this pile of bones that just like, ah, you know, like, um, I just, I, I love the, the imagery that I can hear the sound of the bones clacking together and, and just, and yeah, lots of memories just playing, you know, Daggerfall and all these old school RPGs where, where you're facing these things and they're creepy as all get out and like, you know, and so trying to evoke that feeling that 13 year old Nate had when mm -hmm. he played Daggerfall or Doom or whatever it was and trying to set that sort of mood at the table um yeah i don't know what about you what's some what are some of the the classics that um i i really enjoy kobolds yeah um and i recently used a mimic in my homebrew and i really enjoyed that and having my players kind of discover it um because it was like in the room and they thought the fight was over and it was kind of hiding and they went over to loot the chest and ta-da, it was a mimic. <laughs> um, and especially if they're newer players, like there's, it's, it's a beautiful thing introducing mm -hmm. players to their first mimic or, or first of, of lots of different kinds of monsters where they're just like, what? <laughs> and whereas, yeah, you get those veteran players and it's like, Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. Here we go. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've had a couple of, um, a couple of folks in my homebrew have been playing much, much longer than I have. And a few ways that I've kind of found to make some things new is to reskin 
Mm -hmm. uh, monsters. Like I had, um, I ran a holiday one shot and I knew I wanted to have something that was kind of like, I had animated snowmen. Um, and I wanted something that was kind of like a coal golem. Yeah. So I just reskinned a magman uh, to be a coal golem because it was like, okay, that's about the right level. Because uh, if they went up against any other kind of golem, it would have just smushed them to mush. <laughs> and they were like really excited. They were like, this is really cool. This is awesome. I'm like, all I did was reskin something, but ta da! Yeah. <laughs> no, it works so well. <clears throat> yeah, I love doing that too. Um, yeah, just little things. And I think that's, that's the thing with um, those classic monsters is if, if you're not, if they, it is their 1,300 something goblin that they've killed, I can, I can get why they're sick of it. Mm -hmm. So it's up to the DM, I think, to, to make those goblins characters um, to not just say, and it's a goblin or it's a little green creature, but how can how can you make that a character give it a name give it a story give it and, and somehow impart that to the players uh, make it unique you know because you've also gotten into uh running games do you prefer being a player or a gm or is it kind of like they're equal because they're different they're so different i i think i honestly prefer to dm like I, I think that <clears throat> it's important for me to have both, but um, I get, <coughs> excuse me, I get way more excited when it's like that synergy of all the creativity of the, the map and the story and the NPC and the character backstory and, you know, putting it all together. It's just like, it's a blast. I love it. And, uh, and just, um, you know, it. I, I've heard it described this way many times, and I, I like it. Um, it's not a perfect analogy, but when you cook a good meal for someone and seeing them enjoy it, mm. like that's, it's special, right? We all. Yeah, that's people. a really good analogy. And it's not perfect because, ideally, RPGs are more collaborative than like me inviting you over for a meal. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I I think that the analogy is good in some ways, and I I enjoy seeing people enjoy mm -hmm. what I've created and add to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely one of the things I like about uh, jamming um, being where my idea, where the players take my idea and run with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I enjoy like pre-session and post-session as a GM more. Mm -hmm. But like actually playing the game, I think I enjoy more as a player because I can get into it a little bit more. It's a little bit more immersive. Yeah. It, you're, you're managing so many things when you're running the game um, that it's a little bit harder to get caught up in what's really going on. Yeah. No, I, I, I definitely hear you there. And I think for me, it's also something that I... I haven't DM'd that often. I think when I first started, it was um, very much like kind of just fear of mm. not doing it great. And um, that was kind of like, I'm just, I think I'm okay just being a player a lot, you know? <laughs> and, um, but once I got over that fear, just got comfortable with it and felt like, oh, I can, I can do this just fine. Um, it was a lot more toward DMing that I, I, it just, it brings me life. But I think if I did it, twice or thrice a month. <laughs> um, I think I would, um, or w once a week, like a lot of groups do it. I think I would probably um, experience more of the, the burnout side of things and realize like, uh, um, but as it is, I, I usually do once or twice a month. And sometimes okay. I'll go for two months without DMing. Mm -hmm. How often do you do it? Um, we just had a about a month and a half break, but before that I had been running um, every other week, mm -hmm. running a game, and then maybe one of those off weeks a month uh, getting to be a player in mm -hmm. a, different, a different game. So that, that was definitely nice because it gave me that, I, I, could, I don't know if I could run a game every week, um, at least not with my current schedule, because it usually, takes a little bit of time for me to figure out the next session and mm -hmm. um, 
and all that. I usually kind of use that week weekend between sessions to figure things out. And yeah, go, okay, this is where they went last session. I had been hoping they'd go this way, but let's figure out where the story goes this direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes you need to give it a little a little room to breathe, right? And yeah, that can be a challenge. Um, I, I kind of have a question for you related to to. Uh, kind of going back to the coming to it later in life thing and that is do you think so both of us had a little bit of adult life without rpgs um how i guess how has it changed your adult life in terms of time other hobbies i mean are there have you just totally left certain hobbies uh for this or, you know, how, how has that worked out with just the balance of your life and how it's different? Um, it's definitely changed. There have been a couple of other hobbies. Well, I, I got into RPGs just after I left a job working full-time in theater, which is all-consuming, and I went to more of an office-type uh, job. So it kind of filled that time void that I had not working... 10 hour days on a regular basis. Um, And there were a couple of hot, like I had been trying to learn ukulele and a couple other random things that I was like, eh, this is, I I like playing uh, RPGs more. Um, I think in an odd way, it's actually made me a little bit more confident um, because I've had reasons and I've interacted with a lot more folks than I normally would kind of outside my comfort zone and Mm -hmm. getting to pretend to be these other characters, like trying out like, Hey, what would it be like if I played a character that was incredibly confident and extroverted and not like me? And then kind of taking some of that confidence over into my real life has been fun and cool. Um, Kind of makes me wonder like, how my life would have been different if I had gotten into gaming earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, And, but never know, can't go back in time. (laughs) No. And I think, yeah, even though I definitely said earlier, like, oh man, there's, I I kind of lament the fact that it took me so long and think about what could have been like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy with how my life has been. And, and, you know, who knows? like I might not have met my wife or, you know, all these things that you just never know. Mm -hmm. Um, if I, if I, if the past were, were different. Um, yeah, but for me, I think it's definitely, um, you know, it's, it's taken time from my family in some ways. Um, Mm -hmm. and I guess the YouTube thing helps a little bit just in terms of justifying, you know, making a little bit of money on it. Um, had, it helps or, or just map commissions in general, you know, I make a little money drawing maps for people or whatever that can help, um, just pay the bills. And, um, you know, we were able to like, it, it enables us to like, my wife just took a new job. That's a pay cut. And it's like, well, if it weren't for me bringing in a little bit of income with this, like I, I would advise against it, but I think you can do it. I think we can do this or, you know, or even our mortgage, like, Hey, we had to buy a house that had an office space for me. Cause I just, I want this thing that I do on RPGs and on YouTube to be a part of my life. So, um, and I think also, um, for me, a big time replaced video games. Like I was spending a lot of time on video games and I still play some video games, but not nearly as much. Um, and yeah, I was listening to like, you know, six hours worth of video game podcasts every week and, (laughs) and just playing lots of games and, um, I wanted to be up on all the latest, you know, I had like all the consoles and now it's just like, no, I still have my Xbox 360 and my PS3. I'm I'm a generation behind and I got my PC and I play some games, but I, I find that, uh, the, especially like story drip story, heavy video games. Like, I feel like I'm getting my fix in RPGs now. Mm -hmm. And when Mm -hmm. I play a video game, I kind of just want to like, play some rocket league or some overwatch something kind of mindless <laughs> and like and it's a shame because like i i really want to get into like the witcher 3 or you know like dragon age inquisition but it's just like i kind of creatively like and story-wise like i'm in i'm in the tabletop world for that stuff now mm-hmm. yeah it's interesting yeah i definitely sometimes have moments of <clears throat> like 
there are TV shows that people are talking about that I haven't watched or movies I haven't seen. Um, I think that's a big thing that now that I'm thinking about it, like TV and movies I've been seeing less of, I've been a little bit more, I think, selective with Mm -hmm. what I watch because a lot of that time has gone to gaming. Um, So, but I've also realized like my priorities are, I rather spend time sitting around a table with my friends playing a game than sitting by myself watching a TV show. Um, So I'm like, okay, there's stuff I'm just going to miss because there's too much, there's so much media. Yeah. You just have to miss some of it. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. It's, it's just insane how much, how many good shows and movies there are and books and yeah. Um, Keeping up is, um, is a temptation, but it's one I think that most modern people would do well to just mm, don't need, Mm -hmm. don't need to keep up. (laughs) Don't try. (laughs) I think it's definitely like enriched my life socially. Like I, I'm not a very social person. Um, I think partially because I teach and I come home and I just like, I'm, I'm socialed out. (laughs) Right. Um, But I think that I've, you know, it helps me connect with friends more. I've made, oh. I've made amazing friends and mm-hmm. some of my existing friends, like it gives us a reason we didn't see each other that often, but now we're, there's a couple of friends who I never saw that often who now are, I've gotten into D and D and we try to see each other once a month to play. Yeah. Yeah. That's been, that's been another huge thing. I think most of my friends that I'm close with, we play, whether it's tabletop RPGs or board games, that's, that's how our friendship kind of has either grown or has gotten stronger. Yep. I was, um, I think I was in a place where I just, I I didn't even have like a friend that I felt like I hang out with this person once a week, once a week or once a month. Like, (laughs) I just like, and I was fine with it, like honestly, but I do feel like I'm better off now. Yeah. Cause making friends as adults is so, like it's nice having something where it's like okay we're we know we share something in common that we'll get together and we have to do this in person so that gives that nice like ha- opportunity to make friends that i think a lot of like unless it's somebody at work it's really hard to meet fellow adults yeah um, yeah for sure and not, and not be that weird person that just like walks up and is like hi we're going to be friends this yeah. used to work on the playground not so much <laughs> Hi, my name is so-and-so. Will you be my friend? Oh, is there anything you want to um, uh, plug? And uh, are you on the involved with the maps for the Kickstarter? Yeah, so I am making a, um, I'm making a page. I think I'm doing like another dice drop generator map um, for the guys at Absolute Tabletop in their um, current Kickstarter project. Just launched uh, today at time of recording, but it'll probably be a week or two old by the time people see this. It is called... Adventure Kit Shadows Over Drift Chapel. I wanted to get that right. Um, and yeah, from Absolute Tabletop. So um, I would definitely encourage people to go check that out and support my good friends at AbTab. And um, I'm honored to be a, a small part of, uh, of that. It's a lot of fun working with those guys. And uh, Adventure Kits are, you know, just amazing, truly modular adventure modules that, you know, just lots of bits and pieces and inspiration for a DM to easily kind of put together into an adventure, very customizable. Um, and the setting of Gloam is just this, um, I don't know how to describe it. I guess kind of Victorian era, but, but kind of horror, dark, dark tone, flint, flintlock r- rifles. And I don't know, uh, they're better at explaining it than I am, but go check it out. Other than that, like, yeah, people can find me on WASD 20 on YouTube and, uh, I'll keep doing my thing over there. <laughs> cool. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for, thanks for chatting with me tonight. Yeah, definitely, Don. Thank you. And I, I also have to say that I've, uh, I, you know, as you guys were one of the first RPG YouTube channels I saw, and uh, and I, I've always been a fan. So. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Cool. Bye. Definitely. Nice talking to you, Don. We'll have to do it again sometime. Yeah, definitely. <laughs>
Okay. All right. Bye. See ya. There you go. That was Nate from WASD20. I'll make sure all of his info is down in the description below. Twitter, YouTube, stuff like that, so you can go check him out. Definitely follow him. I've always enjoyed all the videos Nate has done. He's been an immense help for me learning how to make maps and just great inspiration when it comes to tabletop RPGs. And I want to give a thanks to all of our patrons, especially Sean, Joan, Lainey, RV, and Bryce. If you're interested in helping support our channel and help us make more videos for you folks to enjoy, you can go to patreon.com slash rollforinitiative. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And in the comments, I would like to know, when did you get introduced to tabletop RPGs? Uh, how old were you? Were you a teenager? Were you an adult? Were you a little kid? And how has gaming changed your life? I love to have those conversations down in the comments below. All right, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time on Roll for Initiative. Bye!